Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Alright, so now that we've updated our game configuration and we have our background taking up our whole canvas element, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and review our battle scene and we want to review how we want to lay out the different components, the different game objects that make up our game. Uh, so what we're going to do, this is a few screenshots of what the final uh, battle scene is going to look like. And we're going to go ahead and break this down into a few components of how we're going to lay out our different game objects. And so the uh, first uh, two game objects we'll go ahead and lay out is going to be our two monsters. Uh, so we're going to have the player's monster that's currently selected and then the enemy monster that appears. Uh, so this could be a wild monster. It could be another trainer's monster that would appear in our game. Uh, so we'll need to create two game objects. Uh, these can be images because these will not be animated. Um, we could just create those two image game objects. The next elements are going to be the data on the monsters. So our little UI components here. And so... We're going to need to display our monster's name, um, some metadata like their uh, level, their current health, and their max health for our health bar. Uh, if it's our monster, the player's monster, will have the actual uh, number visible. And so then later on, we could also add in things like an EXP bar. Uh, we could add maybe a status effect, so like if they get poisoned, they sleep, etc. We'll have room left on our UI component to do that. Uh, same thing up here uh, on the enemy monster. Then we'll want to lay out our menu bars here. And so this is going to be our main informational bar, this red one here, uh, where it's going to prompt the user for what they're going to do. Uh, just going to have some text. Um, if we're actually in battle, this would display the moves that our monster can actually make. It will also be responsible for displaying our submenu of the actions that are available. Uh, so this will be a separate component, but it'll be rendered on top of our battle, uh, com this menu component here. And so this is going to be where the player provides input if they want to fight, uh, switch to another monster, use an item, or flee from the battle. All right, so now that we've looked at our layout at a high level, uh, we can go ahead and start designing these game objects and uh, rendering them onto our screen. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch back to our code. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new scene to our phaser game instance. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come into our scene keys, and we're going to add a scene called battle. Uh, so we'll have our battle scene. And the reason we're, for, we're doing this is because we want our preload scene to only be responsible for one thing, and that's for loading in the assets we need for our game. If there's enough assets, we'll display a progress bar, and then we'll transition to the next scene in our game. And so currently, this will be our battle scene. Um, so our battle scene won't load any type of files that are needed. It'll all be handled in the preload scene, and then the battle scene will just be responsible for rendering out our battle layout. So now that we've added our new scene key, what we actually need to do is create our scene itself. So inside our scenes folder, uh, we're going to add a new file called battle scene and .js. And what we want to do is I'm just going to copy our preload scene, paste it into our battle scene. We're going to take out the whole preload uh, method because uh, we don't need to do that right now. Then we're going to go ahead and change our scene key to our battle scene. We'll update our class name, so we'll have battle scene. And then we can go ahead and update our imports to only use uh, the ones that we need. All right, so now uh, we have a new scene. What we need to do is come back to our preload scene. We're going to get rid of our create, actually we'll keep our create method, but what we're going to do is get rid of our image asset. So then what we're going to do is come back to our main.js file. We need to tell our scene manager about our brand new scene. So what we'll do is we'll do game.scene. We'll do add. We're going to do our scene keys. And then we'll do our battle scene. And then we'll pass in a reference to our, we'll pass in our class that we want to be instantiated. So we'll have our battle scene. Now we just need to tell phaser that when our preload scene is done loading our assets, we want to move to our next scene. And so to do that, we can use our create method. And so in our create method, we can reference our scene manager by doing this.scene. And then from our scene manager, 
similarly to what we did in our main game instance, we can call the start method to start our next scene. And so if we do start and we provide our asset key, so if we do our scene keys and we do battle, what should happen is our game should reload and right away, we no longer have that back black screen. Instead, we see our background image. And so what's happening uh, under the hood is Phaser is first doing our preload scene. It's finishing loading in all of our assets and caching them. And then our create method is called. And then it goes right to our, it calls start to start our next scene, our battle scene. And then what that'll do, it then goes ahead and calls our create method to create our image here. So when this happens, when we call the dot start method on our scene manager, what phaser will do is it's going to initiate a new lifecycle event for shutting down a scene. It's going to shut down our preload scene and then start our battle scene. So when a scene is shut down, it will go ahead and clean up any game objects that are there. And then it'll go ahead and do the init method lifecycle event on the new scene and then the create once that is done. Um, and because our game is so small right now, this transition seems very seamless and it just uh, transitions to the next scene very quickly. Um, but to see what's actually happening, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some console log statements uh, just so we have some logging for our game. And so to do that, what we're gonna do is in our preload scene, we're just do a console.log and what we'll do is we're gonna log out our scene name so we will do our class, so preload scene dot name. And what we'll do is we're going to add in our method name and we'll just say invoked. Then we'll copy this. We'll come over to our battle scene. We'll do that in our create method there. And we'll just update our class to use the right name. And then what we're going to do is back in our preload scene, we're going to copy this. We're going to place it at the top of our preload method, just so we have logging there as well. And we'll do preload. So now when our game loads, we'll see our preload scene if our preload method's invoked. After everything's loaded, we go to create, and then we transition over to our battle scene. All right, so with our logging in place, what we're going to do is we'll come into our battle scene. Uh, we can close a few of these other files. Let's make this a little bit bigger and we'll start coding. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create our main background, which we've already done. So I'm just going to add a comment. So we're going to create the main background. Then next, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and create our player and enemy monsters. So we'll render out the player and enemy monsters. And so, um, as I mentioned, we won't have any animations, so we can go ahead and re we can create a new game object for each of these. So to do that, we're going to just do this dot add dot image, and then we need to specify our x and y coordinates. So for the enemy monster, what we'll do is we'll do 768 pixels by 144 pixels, and we'll do our monster asset keys, and we'll do our carno dusk. And we'll go ahead and set that over to um, zero for our frame. So if we go ahead and save, we should see our enemy monster appear in our scene. And then for our player monster, what we'll do is we'll do this.add.image and we'll do 256 by 316. And we'll do our monster asset keys and we will do Iguana Night. And we'll do frame, we'll just set to zero so it's explicit. We'll go ahead and save. So for positioning the objects, um, I already have the X and Y coordinates because uh, I've already went through this. Um, but later on in another video, uh, I'm going to introduce a few tools on how we can easily position game objects. And then that way we can get these X and Y values without having to uh, guess. Um, so as an example, um, like if I was trying to position this, you know, maybe I'd start at 100 and be like, oh, that's not enough. Uh, let's try 200 and you see this gets very repetitive trying to position that game object exactly where you want it um, so in another video we'll go over some tools on how we can make this a little bit easier uh, while you're developing your game all right so our next thing what we want to do is our player monster is currently facing towards the left and so that's like the enemy monster facing towards the player and we actually want our player game object facing the other way um, so there's a few ways we, we could do this. Uh, one of them is we could modify the source image and, you know, 
have the artist flip the game object the other way, or we can use a built-in method that's available in Phaser that allows us to basically mirror our objects um, by flipping them on their uh, X axis. Um, and so we can do this by using the set flip X. Uh, so what it's going to do is from the middle of our game object, it's going to go ahead and just kind of flip all of the data so it flips it around. And so what we need to do is we're going to set this to true. By default, it's false. We, we, they won't flip them automatically. And now our monster is facing towards our uh, enemy. All right, so before we add our other components, I want to go ahead and, and pause and talk a little bit about how uh, Phaser goes ahead and renders out our objects onto our canvas. Um, so by default, Phaser is going to draw out game objects as we create them in the order that we create them. And this is something important to keep in mind because as an example, we explicitly created our background image and then we created our monsters. And so if you can imagine, if we we actually created our player monster first and then our background then our enemy it looks like our player monster was never actually created but it is it's just phaser is going to render out the things in the order we tell it to and so when we render things to the canvas when it's in the 2d context you can think of it like a piece of paper and let's say we went ahead and painted it and you know a color pink now the whole piece of paper in canvas is pink. And now if all of a sudden I wanted to draw a blue rectangle over it, this blue rectangle would be sitting over the pink uh, element. And so that's what's happening here is we drew out our image for our player monster, but then we laid out this huge background image across the whole canvas. And so it basically erased that data because when phaser writes the canvas, the pix individual pixels can only have one color. And so when you render that out, it has the most latest thing in that pixel uh, position. There are a few other ways you can handle uh, how you render out elements. Um, one of them is you can specify the depth property on your game object. Um, by default, everything has the value of zero. And so this makes it act like layers. And so if I set the depth to zero, nothing changes. But if I change this to a one, now phaser knows to place this game object in the first layer so it's going to be on top of anything else that gets rendered in our game no matter where we create this at in our create method uh, likewise like if i do a two three etc that will be the precedence the layer of where this will be created at uh, but for the time being i'm just going to go ahead and place our monster back down here uh, below uh, where we create our background we'll just keep that in mind all right, with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, in our next video, we'll finish uh, creating the initial layout of our battle scene. Uh, so as a reminder, there'll be a link to the completed source code in the description of this video. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment. Uh, to be notified of when the next video is released, please make sure you click on the bell icon. For more great Phaser 3 content, please check out some of the links on your screen now.